Hi guys, welcome back to Worms Mass Academy. Uh, <clears throat> today we're going to have a look at integration by recognition. Um, really common sort of questions in exam one and exam two. Uh, definitely exam one where you don't have a calculator, so you have to, you can't use the calculator to integrate. Instead, you need to show how to differentiate something and then hence you can integrate it. So that's why it'll always have the word hence because uh, you've got to use your knowledge of differentiating something to then be able to integrate it. Okay, so the question will be something like f of x equals log ex squared plus 1. Show that f dash of x is 2x on x squared plus 1. Now, usually I do this in one step. However, because they want us to show it, you've got to basically do all your working. So we let u equal the inner function x squared plus 1. Therefore, y is equal to log e of u. u dash, my derivative of that, is 2x. y dash, when we derive log e of u, it's 1 on u, which is 1 on x squared plus 1. So f dash of x, using the chain rule, is du dx times dy du. So we get 2x times 1 on x squared plus 1, which is 2x on x squared plus 1. Okay, you'll see over here it says hence. So using this, evaluate this function here. Now if you have a look at these, I've got, let's move this out of the way. We've got f dash of x is equal to 2x on x squared plus 1. However, we want to integrate x on x squared plus 1. So we want to get this by itself. If we do that, we get x on x squared plus 1. If I divide that 2 to the other side, I get a half f dash of x. Now we know here we've got x squared x on x squared plus 1, but I'm going to replace that with f dash of x. So 0 to 2 x on x squared plus 1 dx, that's equal to 0 to 2, a half f dash of x dx. Now we know we can put that half out the front. So we've got f of x, f dash of x dx. When we integrate f dash of x, we get f of x between 0 and 2. Now we know what f of x is because we've got it up here. When we derive that, we get that. So when we integrate this, we go back to here. So that's what it is by recognition. We're saying, OK, we know that this function has to be a half um, log e x squared plus 1 between 2 and 0. So we get a half log e of 5, and I put 2 in, minus log e of 1, log e of 1, 0. So we just get a half. log e of 5, or you could also say log e of root 5. So we derive something to then be able to anti-derive something. That's why it's called recognition, because you've got to recognize that that function is similar to that function, hence we can use it to anti-diff. Okay, so here the same. We've got a hence, so we know we're going to have to use the derivative. So if I derive this, it's the same as u on v. u equals cos x, v equals sine x. When we derive cos, we get negative sine. When we derive sine, we get cos. We know that f dash of x 
is V times U dash, so negative sine squared X, minus U times V dash, cos squared X, all on V squared, which is sine squared X. On the top, we can take out negative 1 as a common factor. So we're left with sine squared x plus cos squared x on sine squared x. We know that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So that's negative 1 on sine squared x. So we've shown that they're the same. OK, it says hence evaluate. So we know f dash of x is equal to negative 1 on sine squared of x. This doesn't have a negative, so let's get rid of the negative. So we get 1 on sine squared x is equal to negative f dash of x. Of course, we can substitute that into the equation. So we say pi on 4 to pi on 2, 1 on sine squared x dx. We know that's negative f dash of x. So all I did was take the negative out the front because it's constant between pi on 4 and pi on 2. We know when we integrate f dash of x, we get f of x. So I'm going to say negative cos x on sine x between pi on 4 and pi on 2 which is negative. If I find cos of pi on 2, if you're unsure, just quickly draw a cos graph. Cos of pi on 2 is 0. On sine of pi on 2, we know that that's 1. Minus cos of pi on 2, uh, pi on 4, sorry. That's root 2 on 2. Divided by sine of pi on 4, that's root 2 on 2. That's 0. Negative, negative 1, that's positive 1, so it's 1 square unit, if it's an area, so it's a definite integral. Okay, so here we're going to do pretty much exactly the same thing. So I've got x log e kx, find f dash x, and hence integrate that. So u is x, v is log e kx, u dash is 1, v dash, when I derive log e kx, I get k, the derivative of the bracket, on the bracket, k on kx, which is 1 on x, f dash of x, we multiply those two together, so we get log e of kx, plus x times 1 on x, so we get, that's just going to be 1, now we want to integrate log e kx. So if we have a look here, there's log e kx. So we've got to get rid of this one to the other side. So we can say log e kx is equal to f dash of x minus 1. So we can substitute that into the equation. So instead of saying log e kx, we can say f dash of x minus 1 dx. When I integrate f dash of x, I get f of x. When I integrate negative 1, I get negative x, and then a plus c. And we know f of x, we know that that's that function. So my integral is x log e kx minus x plus c. And of course, we can't find that plus c because we're not given an initial condition. But you can see here the link between that and that. We don't know how to integrate log, but we do know how to integrate f dash of x, and we do know how to integrate negative 1. So that's why we can use it. Okay, so... Oops, that's supposed to be x squared. Okay, so u is x squared, v is log e kx, u dash is 2x, v dash is k on kx, which is 1 on x. 
f dash of x using the product rule we multiply so we get 2x log e kx plus x squared times 1 on x which is f dash of x is 2x log e kx plus that's going to give us x we want x log e kx so we want to get that by itself so bring your x to the other side and then divide it by 2 so we can say x log e kx is equal to a half f dash of x minus x because when I bring that to the other side it becomes minus x and then when I divide by 2 we put a half out the front okay so we can't integrate x log e kx but we can integrate 1 half f dash of x minus x dx firstly you can take a half out the front Then we can integrate it. So I've got a half f of x minus x squared on 2 plus c. So I get a half f of x, which is x squared log e kx minus x squared on 4 plus c. Now someone will say, oh, you know, if I have a half, doesn't that multiply the C? It doesn't matter because it's a constant. It doesn't matter if I get a half C or if I get C. When I sub in an initial condition, that C will always end up being exactly the same. Okay, so here, so the thing that gives it away that it's a integration by recognition, it says hence. So I want to differentiate this. So I've got to use the product rule on this, and then I can just straight differentiate sine x. So I'm going to say let y equal x cos x cos x plus sine x. Then we can say dy dx is equal to derive that. We get 1 and leave that alone cos x, so 1 cos x. Derive cos x, we get negative sine x, and we're going to times that by x. And then derive sine x, we get cos x. So dy dx is 2 cos x minus x sine x. Now, we want to integrate x sine x dx, so 0 to 1, x sine x dx. So I want to get this by itself. I want to get that by itself. So I'm going to bring it to the other side. x sine x is equal to 2 cos x minus dy dx. So we can substitute that into that equation. So we get 0 to 1, 2 cos x minus dy dx dx. When I integrate cos x, we end up with 2 sine x minus, when I integrate dy dx, I get y, and we know that y is this. So you're going to put brackets around it, x cos x plus sine x between 0 and 1. And then if you can clean up, I've got 2 sine x minus sine x, which is just sine x, minus x cos x between 0 and 1. If we put 1 in, we get sine of 1 
minus, if I put 1 in, I get cos of 1. Minus, if I put 0 in, sine of 0 is 0. If I put 0 in, I get 0 times cos of 0, which is 1. So that's 0. So our answer is sine of 1 minus cos of 1. We can work that out on our calculator to three decimal places, I think it said. So sine of 1 minus cos of 1. 0.301 to three decimal places. So if you had a calculator, you could just work that out anyway, but here it says to diff it and then hence. Now, this is an actual exam question from 2007, exam one. So you've got no calculator. Now it says if f of x is that, then f dash of x is equal to cos 3x minus 3 sine x. Use this fax to anti-differentiate x sine 3x. So what we're going to do first is look at this and we want to get x sine 3x by itself. So you always want to get whatever you want to integrate, you want to get it by itself in the function. So we can say, bring the 3x to the other side. So we get 3x sine 3x is equal to cos 3x minus f dash of x. So I brought that to the other side and I brought that to the other side. Then we've got to divide our 3 to the other side to get x sine 3x is equal to 1 third cos 3x minus f dash of x dx. Now it says use this factor anti to derive to find an antiderivative. So, 0 to, oh no, we don't, want it, don't have an integral. Uh, we just want to integrate x sine 3x dx. But we know that x sine 3x dx is the same as that. So I'm going to put the third out the front. Cos 3x minus f dash of x dx, which is one third. If we integrate cos, we get one third sine three x. Because when you derive sine three x, you get cos, you get three cos three x. But so sine derives to give cos. So cos, when you integrate it, you get sine, and then minus f dash of x. So minus. Now that's when I integrate f dash of x, I get f of x, which we know is x cos three x. We don't have to put a plus C because it says find an antiderivative. So we get 1 ninth sine 3x minus x on 3 because that third multiplies in cos 3x. So that is an antiderivative of x sine 3x. It's 1 ninth sine 3x minus x on 3 cos 3x. That's it. So we didn't have to differentiate because it didn't ask. It just said to use that fact to find an antiderivative. And once we got x sine 3x by itself, we know that we've got this to integrate or anti-differentiate. We know we can anti-diff cos 3x. We know we can anti-diff f dash of x because when we do that, we get f of x. Um, which is x cos 3x. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, whenever they give you these types of questions, they'll always get you to differentiate something first and then get you to integrate, or they'll tell you what the derivative is, like they did in this case here. Hope it makes sense, and uh, good luck with it. Bye.